What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Seth Lopez and today we're going to be forging an integral chef knife on the 12 ton here out of some one inch round 1085. We got some steel in the fire heating up right now so it's about ready to go. First thing we're going to do is forge in our tip. So to do that I put in the drawing dies. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab our steel and get started. So just real quick on forging in the tip. This is our, bear with my bad drawing, but this is our round bar stock we have. The biggest thing in order to avoid getting a cold shut, these fish, fish mouth uh, cold shut on the end, is to stay off of the very edge of the bar until you've drawn out and kind of squished the middle a little bit. When you squish the, the center and stay off of these corners, you can bulge out the center and then come here and hit on the corners and that's just gonna push everything forward. Whereas if on your first pass, say, you come all the way out to the end of the bar, it'll more than likely fold over on you. So that's just something to think about um, just to avoid doing that. So I'm just gonna work it gently, tapering it out to the front, rotate it 90 degrees, keep working it. gonna come in by hand now that our tip is fairly established and finish it off. Same thing, just uh, constantly turning it and as you get close, come to the edge of your anvil so that you're not, you're not hitting it because uh, that's a really small angle right there. Come in and round it out if you like. Cool. Um, yeah. And then I'll just come to one side and offset it so that one side is straight and then you have your tip coming down on the other. All right, so I changed it out to flat dies and I'm just gonna establish a slight slight uh, flat spot for us to start uh, drawing out our heel. forging this out, we'll just make keep checking and making sure and forging from both sides to make sure that our blade stays as centered as possible uh, in our bolster. And this is about maybe five and a half inches of steel that we isolated. I don't really measure stuff when I'm forging, I just kind of guess and go and see how it turns out. So yeah, this will probably get us about maybe a seven, seven inch chef knife. All right, so next we're gonna put in our fullering dies and use them to spread out material down here at the heel. So just being really gentle because it's, it's easy to overdo it even with the 12 ton and kind of forge out an area that's way too thin. So I'm just rotating the blade to try and push my material down and out towards the, the bolster, what's gonna be the handle later on. So next I'm gonna to come to the edge of the anvil and uh, just hang it over the side and half on, half bl off blows. And what this is gonna do is force all our material to one side of the knife. So instead of looking like a spear, you have it all pushed one way. And then if you still have heat, come to the other side of the anvil, hang your bolster off the edge, 
and kind of smooth out some of those marks you made with the fullering dies. So we're just gonna keep working back and forth between the press and the anvil. I'm really just focusing on pulling that heel down right now. So again, just kind of rotating the knife to pull out and down. Not going too crazy with the press, just kind of massaging the steel to where I want it to go. in that I made. They're about a 36 inch radius or so on both sides. If you don't want to make these, you can just throw in flat dies for this, but we're going to try these out and see how they, they work. I use them for a lot of different processes, so cool. I'm just going to take a cross bean and spread out some of the other material on the blade. file a little bit. And then set up our preform. front of the horn of the anvil. If you hit directly over it, you're just gonna squish your material. All right, so you just saw me creating what I call the preform, and that's where you bend the knife in the opposite direction of where you want it to go in the, in the final form. In this example, the, this bottom side is gonna be what ends up being our, becoming our edge. And so we'll bend the edge down and forward, and then after that, we'll come in and start hammering along that edge to get our bevels created. And as we hammer in our bevels, you'll see the knife starting to straighten out into our final profile that we want. So if we didn't do the preform, we would end up with a knife that's bent way up here and looks like a banana. And then it, once the knife starts to get thin and the edge is really small, it gets hard to kind of bend things back and forth. So when you're doing this, if you don't create enough preform and you start to see it bend back, um, fix it sooner rather than later while you have some thickness in your edge. Thank <laughs> you. 
bevels. For that, just using the round side of the hammer to come in and work the edge. This is going to be a brute to forge chef knife. I was really just focusing on hammering in the center of the billet, the center of the width of the billet, all the way down. I didn't. The edge is still thick. I didn't really touch it. Um, so we'll come in now and focus on the very edge and work our way down. Sometimes you forge it too thin and there's a bulge or something uh, to the point where you can't hammer it back out into the steel. And it'll just create a cold shut. I just, I'll grind those off. And a lot of people probably don't like what I just said, but there's no rules to this. You know, you just kind of find what works for you and figure it out. few heats on the blade I'm gonna start planishing so what that is is just working at a lower heat and using the flat side of your hammer uh, with really light blows just to kind of smooth everything out uh, take out any big dents So our blade 
is about there. We just have to straighten it out a little bit. We're still centered up in our mass from the bolster to where that transitions into the spine. So from here, I'll cut it off, give yourself a little bit of room, and then move over to the flat dies on your 12 ton. And you can kind of isolate some material for the tang and then forge it out from there. But since we have so much steel, we're gonna attempt to do a fully integral handle. So we'll put the fullering dies back in the press and start messing around and see what we can come up with. Gonna try and make this slightly wider. So we just finished up the forging on this fully integral chef knife using the 12 ton coal ironworks press. There's a lot of ways to use the dies to your advantage, especially those fullering dies to move a lot of material really quickly, even with a small press like that. That's my full process for doing a knife like this. It's definitely not the only way to do it, but it's what, what works best for me right now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.